Hey, hey, hey. Very cool, Lily, but you never you never disappoint Ooh. with your intros, I'll tell you. Uh, good Thanks. evening, chat. So good to see everybody. Already 18 in the house. Uh, Jay Patrick, welcome, Fazoli. Region X, uh, and congrats on your uh, on your win last week. Um, we're joined by Little E Bud, Ty Sticks, Uncle Rick, Emily, Russ, and we have some very special guests tonight. Dr. Levy alone, you must have heard about a uh, a giveaway. And uh, so, anyways, to get the show started, uh, I I want to welcome uh, Brock and Chelsea to the uh, to the show. Uh, they're the uh, co-owners of uh, Lord of Spore. Uh, welcome to the show, guys, and, and why don't you just introduce yourselves? Uh, thanks for having us. First of all, everybody, uh, my name is Brock. I'm Chelsea. Uh, I am, so Lord of Spore is actually our product line. Um, we are, the, he's the president, and I'm the priestess of Sovereign Church, which is actually an entheogenic church, meaning uh, we utilize hallucinogens and other plant medicine to uh, achieve spiritual awakening and connection with the divine. Yeah. And, uh, and so how long have you been up op- in operation? Uh, well, this will be the fourth year actually. Uh, so about uh, three and a half years now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and actually uh, Ty uh, introduced us uh, t- uh, to you through the uh, champs, uh, Champs Exposition. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, Ty, for stopping by the booth and, and saying hi. And uh, no dra- problem. dragging us along and introducing us to everybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's pretty good. It's been that. great. It's, it's been uh, awesome. Uh, we, we certainly get to experience it. Uh, so tell us, uh, tell us. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, I, I better give everybody a heads up right now that uh, that uh, Brock and Chelsea have also brought a uh, a giveaway uh, uh, for the show for for chat. And uh, but uh, why don't you tell us a little about the pro- about the products that you uh, that you sell, and um, and then we'll go from there. Right. So, uh, in order to support our mission, actually, one of the things that we do is we we sell magic mushroom spores through our, our website, um, lordofspore.com, and we did bring a giveaway. Okay, if I go ahead and just pull these up and, and show everybody. Yeah, sure. please. All right, hold on. It's kind of awkward because there's a few of them. So huh. we actually have a. a I'll put them on the big screen. Uh, or you did? Yeah. Oh, look! Yeah, look at that. Spores here. And so there's there's five of them total. You can see the names up there on the top: Penis seventy six, uh, Kosamai, Lizard King, and Z Strain. And so, so there's two of the Penis seventy six, just because they people tend to like those ones quite a bit. And then uh, uh, our packaging here, this guy I don't know if any of you guys recognize him, is actually Dionysus. So he is the Greek god of partying. Hmm. So he's the Greek god. Right Revelry also. There's quite a few other yeah, things. Quite a few other things. People do like to party, and it seems like for sure. Uh, that's, that's so what very it is, cool. is, oh, sorry, go, I don't mean go. to interrupt. What no, it is, no. is it's actually magic mushroom spores. So it's the seeds for mushrooms, real psilocybe cubensis, actual magic mushrooms. Um, the spores to. I guess we could probably show you what's actually in the package in that case, right? And so they come in a, uh, a syringe. And so you're not going to be able to see them in there. They're uh, microscopic as well. So, um, And then uh, we also do include uh, just some more information about the product and then about the, the, the church and everything. And then uh, people can uh, sign up and become a member. And there's a, a couple of reasons you might want to do that. You might be crazy like us and actually believe that this is where a lot of uh, religion and, and human culture came from. And then... Uh, Religious use is generally protected in America. So at a federal level, it is uh, 100%. And then state laws do kind of um, vary from place to place. So um, we can give you a little bit of a rundown on that if you'd like. Please, please. So uh, it's, it's kind of funny. I, I, I like to tell everybody that um, so these, these laws actually exist because of Mormons. Um, we are in, in Utah, the, the motherland. And uh, so what, what happened was uh, back in the 90s, I want to say it was about... Uh, 93, if I remember correctly, there was a, a gentleman 
in uh, Oregon who went on vacation from work and took some peyote as part of his religion. Uh, he went back to work, told the wrong person, and then uh, unfortunately was, was fired from his job. So he fought that to the Supreme Court where he lost. Uh, they, they essentially said that you can believe what you want to believe. You can't necessarily practice uh, what you want to practice, which is probably technically the correct ruling. But in, in this case, it was you know not a, a, a good ruling. Um, and so in response to that, uh, our, our late senator here from Utah, his name's Orrin Hatch, he actually wrote a law called the uh, Religious Freedom Restoration Act. And uh, so it, essentially what this did, what this was as a, a response to this gentleman losing his job because of his use for en entheogens um, as part of his religion. So this established um, a, a precedent back at the Supreme Court, the federal level, that, that essentially says that, yes, you, you can do these things um, as part of your religion. Um, a few more things happen there, and the reason there's state and federal laws is because essentially um, the Supreme Court eventually again said that's a great law you got there. It certainly applies to the feds, maybe not necessarily at a state level. Um, so in response to that, there's, I think, 20-something uh, states uh, that have their own religious protection laws. And then um, I want to say another 10 or so that have had the uh, essentially the religious protection laws upheld through a, a court case because somebody was unfortunately um, dragged to the court system. So, uh, we, but like I said, we are kind of crazy enough to believe this, and that is with, with some evidence, um, I, I should say. Uh, for instance, uh, Dionysus, uh, we, we could talk a little bit about him, um, if you guys are interested. This guy back here. We, yeah, we also got him uh, back mm -hmm. there in our, our poster next to our, our stoned apes. I don't know if anybody is familiar with this. Yeah, the stoned ape theory. And I also want you to um, get into the saying on the bottom, which I think is awesome. I love the saying. I immediately understood it. Like, I think anybody who's had the ego death can immediately understand that uh, that saying. But uh, please, please go over that, too. But uh, Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, you can't, kind of can't see it there. Uh, um, it says, if you die before you die, you won't die when you die. And so, uh, you know, one of the, one of the things, um, you know, is religion divides a lot of people but that you know crazily enough uh, one of the things that actually uh, we all have a lot in common throughout all the religions um is the use of entheogens and so this this theme also of of ego death um die before you die and you won't die when you die is is actually pretty common as well and so this particular um saying is uh, inscribed in saint paul's monastery in in greece so it's been there, you know, since the the early days of Christianity. So, um, and it's uh, that we I, I, we also give a shout out for a, a really great book that kind of covers this. Um, if you guys are interested in something like that as well, um, but uh, we we say we believe this stuff, but you know, we're uh, we're not we're not crazy. Um, you know, there's a lot of archaeological evidence linking um, some of the ceremonies of, for instance, Dionysus. Uh, they they call them the mysteries to early Christianity. And so some of this, um, you know, use of entheogens bled over in, in the process there. Yeah, so the the Eleusinian mysteries and also the Dionysian, Dionysian, however you want to say it, mysteries, um, they, it, they went on for over 2,000 years. Um, and it was, you know, the ancient Greeks and the Romans. Uh, you know, a lot of people are familiar with Plato, Aristotle, um, Socrates, Marcus Aurelius, even Cleopatra, actually, um, some of the greatest minds that civilization has ever known, we still look back to these people. Um, and they were all tripping balls with Dionysus in ancient Greece, you know, so people get worried about, oh, what does it do to your brain? All these, you know, deadhead hippies, taken mushrooms and it's like no it's actually some of the greatest thinkers you've ever known where do you think they got those ideas maybe a little bit of a head change right yeah i mean crazily enough this is kind of like the the, the basis of you know western civilization philosophy um, religion and you know if you believe in the stone ape theory even just our ability to communicate artwork um so so you know the the packaging that we have for this spores, we actually have six different sets. Part of that is because um, people that are interested in mycology, they, I like to say mushrooms aren't addictive, but uh, cultivating them can be. So 
people tend to want to try all the different strains and they want to know the differences between them. So that was part of it. But really the biggest thing is our packaging is really important to kind of get the message out there that it doesn't stop at one religion or one like small group of people that there really is so much deep history here. And it's, it's touched pretty much everybody around the world in one way or another. We just don't necessarily know it. And so all of our artwork, we have six different ones that depict some of the religious use and, and, you know, we're working on more, hopefully at some point we'll be able to come out with more, but there's just so much history behind it. So here's another one, you know, talking about the artwork. Um, this is the, we call them our Tassili B shaman. Um, but it's based off of cave art that was found in South Africa and it's somewhere between seven and 10,000 years old. So they've been using mushrooms for ceremonial purpose for at least that long. I, I like, uh, I, I can see the chat down here. I like what these guys, these guys got to say, you got to collect them all. So, uh, we definitely <laughs> we tell people it's just, it's more fun than Pokemon, you know? Ah. <laughs> here, here. Oh, uh, just, uh, just so you know, uh, anything grows. Uh, that's her moniker. That's our Emily. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nice. Yep, absolutely. Um, and so that is what we tell people, though. And, and a lot of people, believe it or not, I mean, there is a, a large um, group of individuals out there that are very interested in collecting them all and, you know, keeping all the different um, varieties alive. And, uh, you know, one of the, the interesting things now is it, it's also becoming um, very similar to the, the cannabis industry where you're getting a lot of different hybrids and just a lot of different um, new varieties that are coming out. And um, I, I'm not a geneticist um but according to the articles i've read um essentially uh, there's there, there's a lot of room there um to kind of work on some of those genetics and, and improve them quite a bit just because of the the, the varieties and everything and it, it hasn't never been done yet so um in the next you know five ten years you'll, you'll probably see a, a lot of really interesting stuff you know kind of similar oh, to see yeah I, I, I agree more i can't agree more with you i, I feel like this big push of, of decriminalization and, and legalization all across the country. And I think with more and more successful measures passing, that's going to be more and more people seeing the benefits of it. And just like with cannabis, when the legalization showed, you know, oh, look, it was legal for a year over there and nothing happened. Let's look at maybe legalizing here. So hopefully that kind of thing is, the, you know, exactly how it goes for for psilocybin and ethogens. I've seen a lot in my state. A lot of the cities have uh, decriminalized. We're still waiting for the, the state to come through, but, uh, and then feds, right? Absolutely. And, and really, like, the people being responsible and ethical about it has been, has, has been huge. Uh, you know, a lot of the reason why they got, to, they got criminalized in the first place was because people weren't educated on them. It was a new thing and everybody just kind of went buck wild and, and they were really giving it a bad name and not really doing a, a greatest service to themselves either. They weren't really getting the best benefit because they were using it really recreationally and not really in the right settings. And, and um, so the educational side is really big. We're not here just to educate people on the historical significance or like the religious or spiritual aspect of it. Um, we're also really big on ethical use and, and getting, you know, being responsible and respectful so yeah. that we can continue to decriminalize it across the board. Um, because really that's luckily cannabis has paved the way because people have been so responsible and, we think that the, the, you know, mushrooms, it's going in the right direction. I, I mean, crazily enough, I, I mean, you, you tell that people think of us as a fairly conservative state and in a lot of ways we are, but we actually just passed a law um, two weeks ago to legalize psilocybin therapy. So I don't, I don't know the details of the law yet, um, or if it's, you know, similar to Oregon where it's going to cost, unfortunately, a, a small fortune to do it. But um, it's still a step in the right direction, you know. And I, I, I think if you, <laughs> if you got, if you talk and do it, certainly, you know, uh, a lot of other states are probably going to be making that push. I would imagine pretty quickly. Um, it, it seems like it kind of did open um, up a lot. I, I think it was probably like CBD, right? And you know, it took a long time even just to kind of get, I guess, a foot in the door with that. And then you know, THC came along and it seemed like it went a little bit smoother and. 
and faster. And now, uh, oh, not only was it at psilocybin, I, I, I am pretty sure that it, they actually legalized uh, MDMA therapy here as well. Oh, yeah. Man. Hmm. So it's, Which I'm not sure yeah. how familiar you, you are with Utah, but that's a really big step for us. We just barely got uh, medicinal marijuana legalized how long ago two years three years uh, it hasn't been too it's been you know it's, oh i guess it was pre-covid wasn't it yeah i think so it hasn't been the, too long since though, covid though. everything just blends oh, yeah, yeah, yeah i agree yeah, yeah that's like the yeah, last so, thing. yeah so it was it was fairly recent though like maybe four years ago um so yeah. it's been slow going but i think the state really once cannabis was legalized it was they were like, oh, okay, we get the tax money. That's nice. People exactly. aren't doing crazy shit. So, like, I mean, it, wasn't it's a still, bad idea. Compared to other places, I, I guess I'm not 100% sure, but from what I understand, Utah is pretty regulated when, when it comes to cannabis. But yeah, I do think, you know, we'll, we'll definitely see a, a lot more um, uh, local movements um, kind of starting on that level. And uh, I mean, I, I think one of the things that will kind of help push that forward, to be honest, is, is, uh, is churches and so in um, a lot of states um like i mentioned there is a religious protection law in place and in, in these places um it is it is legal to exercise your religion without question and so that's just one more thing that kind of you know helps tip the scale and it's definitely one thing one more thing that uh we think people should do uh there's a uh, an article i'd have to see if i can find it for you guys uh, now that i'm thinking about it um I was in the uh, uh, sfgate.com, which is just a, a magazine for the, the San Francisco area. But the uh, the headline was uh, like government, the government doesn't know what to do about uh, these mushroom churches that keep popping up. And like, we know what to do. You know, we, we think that people should start more of them, you know, and uh, exercise yeah. your living. <laughs> yeah. You're here, you're here. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, a lot of people. And, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I, I believe, I truly believe you can hold your thought better than I can hold mine, if you don't yeah. mind. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, uh, for, just further on what you were uh, saying about getting your foot in the door. I know in Canada, when they legalized uh, uh, mushrooms, uh, it was basically, it was, uh, it was for uh, near death, uh, it, end of, end of life. Uh, that, that's her. what they legalized. Yeah, and and uh, at first when I heard that, I I thought, well, I mean, uh, you know, that's, that's not very much. But then later on, I I, I came to understand that uh, with many people, uh, death is one of the most traumatic experiences. It, it, knowing you have death coming on is one of the most traumatic experiences you can you can have. And if yeah. uh, mushrooms can help them, well, then fantastic. Absolutely. They needed the most out of anybody, really. Yeah, yeah I think actually um, this is one of the places where it it, it, it helps um, significantly. Uh, yeah. So, for instance, um, one of my friends, unfortunately, his sister was just diagnosed with ALS. And uh, one of the things that, that she did um, was um, actually some psilocybin therapy. So she found a therapist and she uh, took some mushrooms and then worked with the therapist and everything. And, you know, obviously, uh, mushrooms are not going to cure ALS, um, but they were like the thing, the only thing, uh, essentially, that kind of helped her come to terms with her mortality. And so uh, I, I think it's, I, honestly, I think it's a game changer in that regard. And uh, we, we don't go to a lot of conferences and one of the, um, the people we ran into in, in Denver uh, just a couple of weeks ago, that's what she does as well. Like she works with people um, with, with psilocybin, um, with, with end of life care and everything so it, it's it's certainly that, that's got a, a, a big future and yeah and like you're saying it, it's not really just that I, I think that's a big thing but i mean certainly on top of that um the, the things that are kind of um coming down the pipeline now as far as you know research and everything as far as what mushrooms can help people with is uh he healing trauma is is obviously a, a huge one it, it kind of helps people um you know face that and, and come to terms with it so, yeah. And yeah. I mean, we can talk, I'm not sure if you guys are interested, but we can talk about some of the, um, the clinical side of that and, and like the actual science behind it. Um, yeah. yeah it, sure. so 
it's it's really effective at treating a ton of different stuff. Um, you know, everybody knows it's recreational uses, I feel like, but uh, more and more there's clinical uses that are coming out. And uh, it's so they can treat PTSD, anxiety, depression, um, alcoholism, drug addiction. But more recently, they've they've started using it to also treat uh, people with like eating disorders and then um, neurological issues like Parkinson's and um, and uh, what's the other one? Um, yes. No, uh, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Yeah, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Um, so they have a ton of, you know, clinical uses, but I think that that just reaffirms the fact that these are like heaven sent, you know what I mean? Like this is, it's the earth trying to heal us and, and we should be able to heal ourselves. And, and really the way that it works is by, they increase neuroplasticity. So basically it allows your brain to make new neural connections, which is what a child does when they're learning, they learn so quickly. And, and the older you get, the less readily your brain makes those neural connections. And so since it stimulates that, it it's, it's not just kind of fixing those weak links, but it's reinforcing them. But you can actually like kind of rewire your brain. And that's where the uh, like prayer comes in or meditation or like a lot of these type of uh, like religious you know, church, whatever, spiritual type of things like that is it actually helps reinforce all of this and kind of rewires your brain in the direction that you want it to go. And so you guys are probably familiar or maybe more familiar with the term set and setting. Mm -hmm. And so this is something, you know, that's obviously been out there for a long time. Um, I, I can't remember who coined the, the term initially, but I mean, a lot of this is, is kind of the same, you know, thing. This is what, you know, people have been doing for religions for, you know, tens of thousands of years. Um, but so, oh, oh, go ahead. So, so to explain for anybody that doesn't know, what we mean by set is going to be the set, the mindset that you have going into it. So if you're just looking to be recreational and have a fun time, you're going to have a different experience than if you're actually like trying to treat PTSD or if I'm actually trying to, like I use it to quit smoking. That's going to be the mindset. And then the setting is going to be your physical setting. So obviously a different situation if you take it and go to a rave versus if you take it at home and you're in your safe space meditating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then, uh, like, you know, obviously one of the things we're talking about is the, the benefits and everything. And I, I think all of us, unfortunately, are kind of familiar with SSRIs to, to some extent. Um, it, for those who are, are not, uh, basically an SSRI is a, it stands for selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. And it's a, a chemical drug that... Um, antidepressant. Antidepressant, yeah, they give to like Prozac, basically. And so uh, we we're, you know, just driving around one day and kind of thinking um, what we could think of you know to come up with a better ssri and this is kind of what we came up with uh we think that you know reverence just kind of comes naturally after you know any type of uh, mushroom experience if you didn't have it beforehand you, you certainly would, would have it during and after um, and then integration obviously is um, a, a huge part of it and so you kind of it's you know it's you know what the heck just happened to me and uh what what can i learn from that type of thing what does it mean mm -hmm. You can you you can learn a lot on a journey, but it doesn't really matter if you don't take it into your everyday life and and kind of figure out unpack it right. How can I implement this? Um, so really, the integration is very important. But you know, we we decided mushrooms really are a DIY SSRI, right? You can kind of fix yourself. You don't have to take the meds that big pharma give you to fix a problem, but then they cause five others. And, you know, you're just kind of a zombie and, and a lot of people, you know, they helped, they've helped a lot of people. I'm not going to say that they haven't, but they've also not helped a lot of people as well, where mm -hmm. mushrooms are pretty consistently helping people. Not to say that they're right for everybody, um, but I mean, it's the, the evidence is overwhelming that they are a lot more effective at treating these myriad of diseases or or ailments um then way more effective than pretty much any of the current approved regimens or, or treatments 
Uh, sorry, did you have a question, Rick? Uh, excuse me. Uh, I, I noticed Cake in a Cup earlier. Uh, cheers, mate, from Australia. Uh, he, I think he said something to the effect, uh, like, wait, what? He said uh, you can uh, uh, quit smoking with mushrooms. And and uh, actually, last night we, uh, we had this discussion. And uh, Chelsea, why don't you expand a little bit more on your experience? And, and also, I, I wanted to make reference to... Uh, to Ty, who uh, he's a smoker, and uh, and but he was shared. He shared that uh, uh, when he's on mushrooms, sometimes smoking a, a cigarette was a, an enjoyable part of the experience. But uh, I'll let you take over. Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I tried to quit smoking for over fifteen years. I had taken mushrooms plenty of time within that time frame, um, and never with the intention of quitting smoking though. Um, and you know, it, mushrooms aren't some, I mean, they are magical, but it's not just some magic button that's going to fix all your problems. You do have to put in work. And, uh, you know, I have a daughter and one day she came to me and, and had a really hard heart and begged me to quit. And so I realized like, at this point I need to get serious. I tell people about the benefits, like time to put my money where my mouth is. Right. So, this is where the the set and setting become really important. So you might roll your eyes when I say it, but you can kind of program the mushrooms to do what you want. And the way that you do that is by setting your intention. Um, and so what I did is I, I, I decided I'm going to do it on this day. It was the, the more meaning that you can put into it, the, the stronger the effects are going to be. So um, I'm not going to go into too much detail and bore you guys, but basically I, you know, I went and had my last cigarette and I said goodbye to it. And then I, I cleaned my whole house and I, you know, I made a mala necklace and I meditated and I, I actually wrote down, this is like, I'm doing this to quit smoking. And I acknowledged that I, I even talked to my mushrooms and I told them like, you're probably going to kick my ass, but it's okay. I'm along for the ride. Do what you need to do. And then I took them and I went and laid down. So um, really when you're trying to do anything like this, where you're, you're really trying to get benefit, you're trying to treat something, it's, it's better to go as deep as you can with it. So that means like cut off external, um, noise if you can, or, or distraction. So like, don't just turn on the TV and sit in front of it. Don't go play video games. Like that's going to just distract your brain from the real work. Um, so I went in the room and just kind of laid down. I usually get sick. Um, so it wasn't a fun journey. I, I hugged the toilet for three hours, just repeating over and over again. I don't want to smoke anymore, but I literally rewired my brain to no longer want to smoke anymore. And, um, eventually luckily Brock came and snapped me out of the, the thought loop that I was in. And, and, uh, I was able to kind of integrate some of that, but it, it literally was like every time that I was repeating myself, it was just reaffirming that like, we're going to rewire, you know, basically an addiction is just, you have a trigger. This is the answer to it. So you get stressed out, you have a cigarette. I just ate dinner. I have a cigarette. I'm going on a drive. I have a cigarette. Um, so it was, I, it was almost as if my mind was breaking all of those connections and rewiring it. Um, after the fact, I'm not, like I said, it's not some magic pill that's just going to fix all of your problems. You still have to put in work. Um, so I still had cravings, The uh, it, but it wasn't the same kind of cravings. It was like the hand to mouth, the oral fixation part of it. I, you know, I, I wanted to be doing something with my mouth or my hands. And then also, you know, I would, I would crave it when the, the times that I normally would smoke, like I'd have dinner. Okay. Well, I want to have a cigarette now, but it wasn't a physical urge anymore. And I didn't even realize that for about another week or two um, until it, me and him had gotten in an argument and I would normally be like, screw you, I'm going to go buy a pack of cigarettes on the way home. Or at the very least, I every time I would pass a gas station, the thought would cross my mind and I'd have to force myself not to pull over. Um, I, I literally left, I drove home, I got all 45 minute drive, I passed multiple gas stations on the way. I didn't even realize until the next morning as I was getting ready to go back into the office, the thought literally never even crossed my mind to stop and, and get a pack of cigarettes. And that was when I realized at that point, like I straight up rewired my brain. So the more that you can put into it in the beginning to like, this is what I want to do. 
this is what I like focus that attention mindset mindset exactly focus that as much as you as you can and it's you'll get a lot better benefit out of it and then of course like I said the integration on the back end um <clears throat> just realizing kind of think back why did I experience what I experienced and how does that apply to my everyday life and how can I take it into that and you'll see a lot more lasting results and and deeper impact I, I saw someone here in the, the comments that had some good advice, maybe if this might work for Ty, if he tries it also, is to take mushrooms and lick an ashtray. Ooh. And he would never <laughs> smoke again. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how you to type that in there, but I, I saw that. And oh. that. that would definitely do it for me. <laughs> so, I'm good. That was exactly it. My internal... Uh, narrator it, it was you want to stop and get a pack of smokes don't you get that stop stop every time um but it literally rewired that to the point where i now i had i've quit for longer it's been a it's been about a year and a half now um i've i've quit for longer in the past but it's still after a year was just such a struggle um but it, it is totally different so uh, one of okay. the cool things. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, uh, I want to. No, please. No, I was just going to. Uh, uh, um, okay, okay. Go ahead, and then I'll. I just wanted to uh, talk about what's going on on the screen here. You go ahead, please, Brock. Oh, I was just going to say one of the co cool things about actually going to. We go to a lot of conferences and stuff like that, and uh, one of the really cool things about it is actually we get to hear everybody's story, and. Um, you, you know the the amount of people that have come up to us and has, have told us that they've you know quit drinking, quit smoking at, at this point is just crazy. So um, we were in Raleigh a couple of weeks ago and there was like three people just at that conference who had just, you know, quit drinking, just didn't want to drink anymore, took mushrooms and kind of set their intention and stopped. So actually I hear a lot of people even have similar results in situations where they don't set their intention. Um, so I'm not saying that you have to go through all of that to get like healing benefit, but if you have something in mind that you want to work on, putting some some work like even just writing it down journaling about it talking to somebody like that's why they work so well with therapy um uh with like guide, guided therapy and and things like that is that you're actually talking to somebody about it and kind of get on the same page like yep this is what and then you you're committed to it and uh you know it's I like to say that the mushrooms will always give you what you need it just might not be what you want and so that's where the reverence becomes really important. If you like, it, it's kind of a fuck around, find out thing sometimes, right? Like if you, if you're being really disrespectful to them, you'll get that ego death will be a lot harder to, to you know, to, to integrate. And so that's kind of where you can't really avoid the reverence because they'll give you a spanking if you do. <laughs> good point good point so what's going on right now is uh we're doing a uh uh we're doing a duck race i i'm never good at explaining this but this is for todd mccormick's genetics and and russ would you please explain to uh well to uh, brock and chelsea and anybody new in chat what's going on of course yeah for everyone watching, if you just put in the word as you see it on the screen, authentic, into chat, you'll be automatically entered for your chance to win. And if you win, you're going to be winning, I believe they said, a duck for this race. Yeah. And um, well, if your duck wins the race, you're going to win some free seats from yeah. Todd McCormick. So you got two chances to win right coming up shortly. Oh, so this is going to be a yep. double draw. Double draw. Yep. Yep. And two, two ducks. And, um, yeah, and uh, Todd has opened uh, the prize to uh, anything on his website. So we, use, we simply send you to his website and uh, oh, awesome. you, uh, yeah, pick anything you want from, uh, from, uh, from his. Uh, so good luck with that. Yeah. Um, so there were some other things I wanted to discuss with you. Uh, I, I noticed uh, you've got some beautiful uh, artwork. And uh, maybe later, uh, I, little E Bud, maybe we can we can bring up their uh, Instagram. But uh, absolutely, uh, 
maybe even you could even maybe start with that po- that you do posters as well it's another another business you have there tell us a little bit about the business and uh, and tell us about that creation that poster behind uh, behind you there yeah, so it's it's it's, it's not really another business. It's just we, we do make them um, in in house for ourselves and everything. So um, we uh, someone mentioned the stone ape uh, theory there in the, the chat also, and I think we've got um, one of our, our stone ape stickers here. And so he's also um, on one the, on our back poster there. And uh, basically, this this poster here was just kind of a, a mismatch of of our artwork that we put together. Um, but so uh, it sounds like a couple of your uh, your your listeners here are, f- are familiar with the stone ape theory. Is that something that you guys have, have are familiar with as well? I know, uh, Rush. You said you were uh, not not me. I, I I don't know too much about it. So essentially, you know, uh, we we kind of believe and uh, th- that at some point in human history, this uh, kind of this this scene here happened. You know, we were out there. Uh, chasing the the cattle through the the prairies, and they were looking pretty tasty. Um, for one reason or another, maybe we couldn't catch up with them, but we we were, you know, pretty able to to pick up on the the, the mushrooms that were growing there on the cow patties instead. And so, um, obviously, for anybody who's taken mushrooms, uh, they can kind of re- relate to the experience of of what that might cause. But you know, kind of the idea behind it is that. Um, you know, the experience led early humans to, you know, to need something to kind of express the thoughts, the ideas that they were having. And so uh, language uh, was, was, a, was a big probability that kind of came out of that. Um, some other things, um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever had a, a mushroom experience with just um, small doses um, tend to actually increase visual acuity. And so they help with things like edge detection. And so from a, a biological perspective, um, one of the things that would, would obviously be a, a result of that uh, would, you know, be a, a, an advantage in, in things like hunting. So, you know, maybe we didn't catch the cows the first time, but, you know, we ate some mushrooms and we were able to catch them the second time. <laughs> so, uh, so some other things uh, along those lines, I, I mean, for instance, um, it, it does it does tend to, like, increase... Um, the uh, the likelihood of human connections and, and group settings and things like that, and so there's some advantages there um, as well. Also, it increases your libido in smaller doses, well, small and mid and higher doses for some people. But uh, so then you get you know more procreation as well. So there's there's quite a bit of evidence to suggest that they that they at the very least they help advance human civilization and help us develop. Uh, you know, language, art, mathematics, and things like that. Maybe not totally create them, but at at the very least develop them and further some of those ideas. I mean, think about it. If you didn't have Netflix and all you had was like mushrooms in the night sky, you'd probably come up with a lot more cool shit than like, (laughs) you know, right? (laughs) I have people have a lot more time to be creative. And so, uh, you know, we, we we're showing you guys the uh, the bee shaman here of Tassili Cave, and so the original artwork I mentioned was about I think seven to ten thousand years old, something like that. But we also do have the archaeological evidence now um, that they were actually using Cubensis mushrooms, and they were using them for religious reasons. So, you know, it didn't it didn't take long for us to you know kind of get out of the the, the stoned ape phase. And uh, it moved to kind of a, more of a, a religious and, and ceremonial use thing, and so it, it's just something that's kind of been part of, of um, part of every culture. So Chelsea's got another one of our um, stickers here in our artwork here. So this is oh, Quetzalcoatl. Wow. The Aztecs and the Mayans worshipped him. So uh, you know, mushrooms and and other entheogens aren't just you know in the Western civilization or, or really in, confined to one area. We've seen them all over. Um, you, you can. So, you know, obviously, uh, you know, a lot of people when they think of, you know, like the Mayans and the Aztecs, uh, as far as religion goes, one of the first things that, that come to people's minds is probably human sacrifice. And so Quetzalcoatl uh, was actually the, the god who showed up and kind of convinced them or, or told them that it was not the best idea to sacrifice people. So he, he's also known as the, the civilizing god, um, essentially. So 
And he, he did this by giving people a uh, cacao because obviously, you know, you can't have a civilization without you know, chocolate. chocolate. And so uh, he, he brought the chocolate. He was the very first person, as far as we know, that brought the chocolate and the mushrooms. <laughs> so, <laughs> he, he was that's, fact, that's where that combination came from. <laughs> yes, yes. He was, in fact, a trailblazer, you know. And so uh, he, he, but he did show up. He told them all to kind of stop um, sacrificing people, gave them all magic mushrooms, taught them some civilization skills. And then uh, the, the myths go that he just kind of sailed off into the sunset and uh, wasn't seen again. It's actually a, a, there are some sects of the Mormon religion that used to believe that he was Jesus because um, he was a white guy with long hair and a beard. And he showed up and was like, hey, let's be nice to each other. Maybe don't kill each other. Um, and then he just kind of disappeared and he actually promised them that he would be back and gave him a date. And then lo and behold, who showed up? Uh, yeah, Cortez. <laughs> so. Um, and, and so, so they actually thought that Cortez was Quetzalcoatl and he just kind of went along with it so that he could rob them blind and crush their religions and and uh you know turn them all yeah so so one of the reasons uh, i'm sure among others but uh definitely one of the reasons why you know initially they were not you know more um apprehensive about you know cortez and his party when they showed up is because they were were told by quetzalcoatl that he would return and so obviously we we all know the the history of that which is actually you know part of uh kind of uh, the the history of religion also which was you know the the christian church uh, making a, a really, really strong effort to wipe out um, entheogen use ac- across the world. And so, um, y- you know, in, in Rome, when they kind of formalized Christianity, um, one of the things that they um, they did was make a real effort to kind of go after any entheogen use. And so obviously the, the things like the, the mysteries, like, you know, Dionysus up here, um, th- those were shut down, um, you know, more or less immediately after a couple thousand years. So then obviously they went through, you know, Central America. And uh, one of the, you know, fun fact, um, the, the war on drugs in America actually started um, with religion, um, with the, the Christian church. And one of the, the first things they did was when they were able was go after um, peyote and, and try to eliminate um, the use of peyote across the country as well. So formally that was the first even predating that though i um, there's a lot of evidence to suggest even like the witch trials and and the, the pursuing that as well um so so back to um the mysteries the the cult of dionysus and and the eleusinian mysteries the they drank a or they drink a hallucinogenic beer for the eleusinian and then a hallucinogenic a eucharist a, a, a wine basically for dionysus but it was primarily so back in the day, they didn't have Greek wine is is famed for being ancient Greek wine and Roman wine is famed for having to be diluted by like 10 to 20 parts because it was so strong. It could kill you if you drank it straight. But back then they didn't have the distillation process. And so you actually couldn't get an alcohol t- content that was high enough to do that. Um, basically what they were doing is they were using different types of herbs and, and plants and, and hallucinogens to make a psychedelic wine. Um, and it was primarily women that would do that. So that's where you get like the image of a, a, a witch or a warlock with a staff. They would actually wander the hillside with staffs of, I think it was elder, um, or holly maybe. Anyways, they would with sticks that were hollowed out at the top and they would pick the different herbs and stuff it in there so that they could continue on. Um, and so that was a big part of the reason why the, um, or at least there's a lot of evidence to suggest that's a big part of the reason why the witch trials were so prevalent in Europe and in the US um, was because, you know, on top of that also women primarily really help to uh, further the the house churches. Um, we like to host. We like to, you know, we, we're mothers. We like to to do the mom thing and kind of get every, make sure everybody's good. And so they really went after that to try and shut down our connection with that. And then, you know, if, if, if nobody knows the recipe anymore, then I guess they just can't do it, right? Um, so. I, I did actually want to show this, this other one we got here too. So this is Brahma. So. Um, you know, we got our saying up here that came from the, the monasteries of uh, St. Paul. In um, 
Hinduism, they actually have a substance called soma, and, and some of your your listeners may be familiar with it. But um, there's actually a line in the the Rig Veda that's that's fairly similar along this the, the ego death thing. It's actually uh, we have drink soma and become immortal, and so it, it's kind of uh, one of the things that's 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 been in you know Hinduism and kind of some Eastern religions um, since the the very beginning as well. And so um, Greek and um, I believe it or not, in, uh, Indian religious traditions actually have some of the same um, roots as well, uh, as well as the Zoroastrians. And so they actually had a, a, a substance soma as well in their religion. And we've we've got again, you know, archaeological evidence that we found that actually points very strongly. We actually have a, a tapestry that they found that's got mushrooms on it. And so, you know, since the it, we got archaeological evidence that basically says, you know, that the, the drink of the gods was, in fact, um, Slosomy Cubensis. Yeah, I see. Yeah. You know, as <laughs> you of your people are pretty familiar. You're, you're actually correct. It was LSA or ergot um, that was the, the main ingredient for Kaikion. And we do have archaeological evidence to prove that. Um so yeah, ergot equals tripping balls. It also equals gangrene if it's not prepared properly. Um, so that also is another, something else that's been attributed to the witch trials actually was that uh, people, they it, it's possible that they were eating ergotized bread. And so if it's not prepared properly or in the right um, quantities, I guess, there's a lot of different factors, but it can actually cause, they used to call it, it was called the dancing plague or um, St. Joseph's fire. St. Anthony's, Anthony's fire. There you go. And so literally it would, they were hallucinating, but their bodies were like eating themselves. And so they would go out and just dance until they dropped dead. Um, and that's the more extreme side of it. But they think, you know, the, like here in the U S that the witch trials were basically, they were eating ergotized bread and having mass hallucin uh, mass hallucinations and hysteria and which was causing the paranoia and also, between that and then you know them trying to demonize it so that's actually where this guy comes in um so a lot of people are familiar with albert hoffman he's the guy that invented lsd synthesized, synthesized invented, invented. I because of words i'm gonna say he invented he had, a, he had a very famous bicycle ride didn't he exactly yeah exactly <laughs> So not only is he the first person to do that, but he's also the first person to identify and synthesize psilocin and psilocybin as well. So he's really, he did a lot to, to, to make, first of all, you know, ergot's been something that's been used for deep, deep roots, you know, millennia. And, but it really just wasn't safe to use if you didn't know, what was what you were doing and so since all of that knowledge has been lost he brought it back into being able to be safe to use like now you could drink a cup of it and not overdose and die granted it might fry your brain a little but i don't recommend doing that please don't do that um <laughs> but you know, back in the day it was like you ate oh no you ate two pieces of bread you're dead now yeah i mean i definitely uh, you know there's a happy little accident as, as you know bob ross likes to say that uh, without uh, that happy little act in his discovery, who knows what would happen, right? So somebody also mentioned DMT. Um, DMT is a spiritual drug, and it's been used for quite some time as well. Uh, ayahuasca. You know, ayahuasca. Yep, that's the main ingredient in ayahuasca. Um, on top of that, I'm not sure how many of you guys are familiar with the story of, of uh, Moses and the burning bush, um, but there's, you know, it's... Uh, it was an acacia tree, which they call the tree of life um, in, in some, in some uh, places, but it also actually has some of the highest levels of DMT. Um, so if you, you know, if it was really burning, chances are he could have been having a, a, a pretty nice DMT trip if he was standing close to it. <laughs> here, here. <laughs> Oh, hey, you guys have laid so much knowledge on us. Uh, thank you so much. It's been a, it's been an incredible, and as always, the time goes by so quickly. Um, but um, where was I? Oh, I did want to talk a little bit about um, uh, the different, uh, talk, talk about maybe strengths of strains. Uh, just ignore that. 
Exactly. Okay, is that a new one though? We can't ignore that. That's a new one. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it's gone. It's gone. It's a celebration. But, uh, did somebody win the wanted, prize? But I did want to uh, first of all thank you, uh, Chelsea, for explaining in in much detail. Um, you know you, the, that picture of you uh, hugging the toilet bowl. You know, it's just ingrained in my in my brain. But Brock, I, I I I hope that you were there to hold back the vomit from her hair. Okay, yeah. No. Uh, he, he stayed in the other room. It's honestly, <laughs> he knows me. I I'm like, I like to say that I always recommend having a sitter if you can. Somebody, you know, just a safety blanket if you need something you can yell. But really, you want that person to be somebody that you trust. So. Um, I was actually telling Emily that, you know, you want to be able to get naked and do some weird shit and have them not judge you. That's like the best type of, of a uh, sitter you can have and have them just sit back and say, okay, as long as you're safe, like I'm here for it. Um, and, and so he's willing to do that for me. So he just, uh, he stayed in the other room and kept an ear out. And finally, when I got on his nerves enough, he came and was like, Hey, you're good. Stop. Just stop. Yeah, no. And, yeah. and by the way, in my, in my, in my experience, in my total history with uh, podcasting, it's always been Russ sitting on this side and Emily sitting on this side. Like always, okay? You see what they do to me? You see what see what goes on? I, I think I don't to know. know. I told him that we should just stay where we are because guess what? It's mirrored <laughs> on the actual YouTube. So I'm under Russ's name anyways. What are we going to do a giveaway? You guys want to do it? I thought I heard a giveaway. Okay. I don't know. Did I hear a giveaway? Yeah. I heard giveaway. I heard giveaway. You go ahead and you can set that up. Uh, you can set that up, little E Bud. And do you want to remind us uh, when it'll all be in this package? Yes. Yeah, so we already showed you guys the spores. We'll show you again if I can get them up here. There we go. So you got the five <coughs> different spores, uh, or sorry, there's five spore syringes. Uh, it's four different varieties. Um, you also mentioned something about the, the, the potency and stuff on the back of each one. We have a little bit of stats here that kind of talk about potency and, and, <coughs> and, and some stuff like that as well, but we can answer questions if you need. Um, we, what we didn't mention though, is we've got, we're going to include the stickers that we showed. So we've got, um, all the different stickers here. We have a cool little, um, magnet. We've got some pins, <coughs> so just some random swag, um, and then also a shirt, if you can see. It's one of these shirts in whatever Very size. Cool. And then, um, I think that's it, right? I think so. Wow. Yes, it Very is open generous. Yeah. So, so the spores alone, uh, I think value, it's like 150 bucks worth of spores. And then plus some cool swag that you can give around and then also we'll include some it's, it's a little brochure that talks a little bit more about the artwork and then also about the church um i just want to say you know we're non-denominational we don't re necessarily uh talk about one or, or push one religion over another it's more so just educating people <coughs> on how they can use mushrooms to um, further their own religious or spiritual understanding um or you know just heal it's uh, what was it the Bible? He says, "Doctor, heal thyself." Um, uh, we we think that it's really important and and that people have the tools to do that because it's possible. I've done it. I've seen countless other people do it, and I know that you can too if you just approach it properly. That's why you got to keep in mind the SSRI. Don't forget your SSRIs. Here, <laughs> here, here, here. Essentially. So Repressed long enough, you know. So, yeah. so go ahead. Re repurpose it. Repurpose, you know, those what we're getting away from. I like that. You know, we can still understand it. We can still apply it. But SSRIs, you know, and, and repurposing in that way. I was listening earlier, and I just I think that's really cool. Yeah, and so I mean, obviously, like a lot of the research coming out now with um, you know psilocybin therapy and, and everything is just like really super positive. Um, I, and all the research coming out for chemical SSRIs is really super negative. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of like, what were we doing for the last, you know, 30 years or whatever it was. And so, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I think this is definitely just kind of a, a better way to go about things. And I think, you know, kind of, you know, moving forward, I think we're, we're fortunately going to see a lot more of that. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's about damn time. In a, in a lot of other cultures, they don't use SSRIs or antidepressants or these type of medications long term. Uh, they use it more. It, it's really good to get people out of that deep, dark hole, right? Sometimes you're just like, you just keep digging and you can't find a way out. And it's, it's really good to kind of give them a, a ladder. Um, but once you're out of that hole, what's the point in keeping taking it? Uh, that's where like the mushrooms can come in and fix it so that rather than just being a zombie and going through life, not really experiencing anything, um, you can actually kind of embrace. I mean, that's one of the largest things that you can learn from mushrooms versus pharmaceuticals, though, is that a pharmaceutical is going to put a blanket over you. It's going to hide everything. It's not you're going to still experience it, but you won't even be able to vocalize the pain that you're in still from that because it literally just mutes you and it zombifies you. And when you're in mushrooms, it, it opens that up. So you have to have that conversation. You have to like with you talking about how you wanted to quit smoking and you tried it for years before and stuff and, and you couldn't do it. And it took that rewiring those medications, like the big pharma medicines we're taking, they're not trying to heal anything. They are just, covering it up they're like a blanket statement on our brains whereas like um i feel like when it comes to that the mushrooms or dmt or lsd things like that it's it's making us actually have to learn in that moment no matter how long that trip is in that moment you kind of have to learn how to keep yourself out of that hole you know, so you're not relying on it because once that wears off you still have that open mindset of what you learn throughout that experience that now you have to apply and it kind of gives you a for me it would give me a, like a like a better umph to want to apply instead of oh here's another day where i'm popping a pill and i'm about to become a zombie for the next 12 hours to get through it it doesn't leave you feeling drained like that exactly it's not just a band-aid it actually addresses the issue and, and also i think that's one of the reasons why it's kind of taken so long for it to be uh, legalized and even used for for medicine um, because what what good is it for a, you know a giant pharmaceutical company to give you something that you're going to take once or maybe twice or you know a handful of times and then be done with you know or something yeah. you can go in your backyard and pick or you can you know you can you can cultivate on your own and you're not required to get a prescription and go in and and pay them the money to have it. Yeah, I mean there's just no exactly. profit motive, no profit motive for them whatsoever, you know. I shouldn't say whatsoever now. Um, I mean, one of the, the kind of issues that it's obviously great to see things moving forward, but one of the issues with um, like the legalization efforts in, um, in uh, Portland is that it's, it's like $3,500 to go get treatment. And I think they give you like an eighth, <clears throat> something like that, three and a half grams. And so it's, I, I, I mean, obviously you're going to have an experience, um, but you know, just that, that price point is out of reach for a lot of people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's sad, you know, because there's obviously a lot of people that need help with things and they, they could, could just can't afford something like that. So, Also, there there was one other thing that I wanted to bring up before I forget. Um, it seems, I mean, I, I'm not sure how many of your listeners are in the U.S. Um, I know Canada, obviously, you can just go by the real deal. But here in the U.S., you can't in most places. And so um, a lot of the stuff that's on the market is Amanita based. So that's going to be the red mushroom with the white spots on it. A lot of people um, mentally image or picture that because it's kind of a, an iconic picture of thinking magic mushroom, but it's not the same thing as a real magic mushroom. So um, Amanita is not a, a hallucinogen. It's actually a deliriant. Basically, instead of uh, giving you the type of effects that most people are looking for out of magic mushrooms, they actually make you feel kind of uh, drunk and drowsy. Um, you might fall asleep and have some vivid dreams. And that's where the hallucinations come into place. Um, so a lot of the pro since they don't have the type of body high or the type of experience that people are usually expecting, um, uh, most of the time here in the U.S. at least, uh, those Amanita products are going to have... Um, usually they'll have like delta nine delta eight or a mix of other research chemicals um and so that's why people tend to have such varying results with it is because it's not just amanita and it's just I mean, exactly they're just not the same it's not magic mushrooms it is a magic mushroom they do have some benefit um from what we under you know from I guess there, there's not a lot of clinical proof on any of this, but, uh, you know, I talked to a lot of people that have used them for, you know, 
for a myriad of different things like this similar stuff, drug addiction, anxiety, depression. Um, but it's, it's more going to put you to sleep so you can work on that in your sleep. Um, versus like awake and actually integrate it. So we just like to, to, we're really big on educating people. So that's one thing that we see a lot of people having questions. Right on. Absolutely. And listen, before we do the draw, um, unfortunately, there are a couple, a few states that you can't legally ship to. Um, but uh, what we'd like to do is uh, introduce the Iceni rule for uh, for this draw as well. So if unfortunately, and, and I'll get you to name off those states, but if you are in one of those states, then um, uh, then maybe you can pay, uh, if you win, are lucky enough to win, you can pay it forward to somebody in a in a legal state. So what are the st There's California, California, Idaho, and Georgia, unfortunately. Uh, but okay. if you are in one of those States and you do win, we'll still send you everything else that we can. Yeah. We just can't send the spores, unfortunately, but we can send the stickers. We're, we're happy to send swag. Um, people like the artwork. We like it too. It tells a story. Who does your guys' artwork? Do you design it yourself? Uh, yeah, we I designed it, um, kind of came up with the concepts, then um, we we just hired a third party artist to kind of come up with some of the stuff for us. Um, so, but we've been working with them now for um, I don't know a year and a half, two years or something like that. So, but we're actually we we want to add more varieties because we just we like the art. We want to add more artwork. You know? Well, and there's so many more stories to tell. You know, I'm not sure how many of you guys are are familiar with Mormonism, but there's a lot of uh, psychedelic roots there too, and and that would probably piss off our locals a little bit. So we, we like to rock the boat. Um, that's one that right I would on. do. <laughs> but right honestly, on. I got to get going. Um, so I, I, I appreciate you guys having me. Uh, we, we could do the – I don't know when you guys normally do the giveaway, but we could do it now if you want before I go or if it's okay. – Go ahead and run it. Let's rock it right now. Hey, good luck, everybody. Okay, good, good luck. luck, everybody. And, and thanks, seriously, uh, thanks for taking the time to come on the show and kind of educate everybody. We appreciate it. Absolutely. So Congrat it Matty Bird. It seems okay. like Congratulations. Maddie Bird. Congratulations, Maddie. Bird. Congrats, Maddie. Congrats, Maddie. Uh, you guys are, are well versed already. So, so uh, send a uh, send your contact information to our uh, our website, let's be buds.ca. And uh, we'll get that information to uh, Chelsea and Brock. And, um, and um, yeah, congratulations. Uh, and thank you again, uh, Todd. Uh, actually, er, sorry, <laughs> Brock. I don't know where my head was. Uh, <laughs> Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea has agreed to stay on a little bit longer. We're, we're going to go on to some other topics, but please, we'll, we'll keep an eye in chat. If you have any, any other specific questions for Chelsea, um, she'd be glad to answer them. So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Brock. Yeah, we'll see you later, guys. Take it easy. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Nice. Thanks for nice being here. It's good talking with you. Now, yeah, I do have a question, cool. actually. Um, I was wondering, like, because I know earlier you were talking about, like, under federal rights and stuff, there's um, religion or freedom of religion with using entheogens and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. What religion is that? Or is it just, like, I identify that I use this plant spiritually. Like it doesn't matter what religion you claim. Like, do you, how does that work? So, so the way that the law works is um, it doesn't necessarily. So some people believe it has to be like a native American religion or, or something along those lines. But uh, that's part of the reason why we do the artwork this way is to help prove like, Actually, most religions, there's like a pretty good argument that their bases or their roots or at least some portion of the religion came from the use of hallucinogens in one way or another. Um, and so really the 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 determining factor there is um, you have to be able, at least here in the U.S., you on a federal level, you have to be able to um, prove or to convince them that you hold a sincere religious belief. So you can't just go in there and say, I do drugs because it's my religion. You have to actually be able to articulate why that is your spiritual belief. So, so I personally, I, you know, I don't, I always used to say like, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual because I, I organized religions always interested me, but it was more because I felt like they were saying they were all telling such similar stories, but they were fighting and literally killing people over details small little differences and, and, you know, 
I, it didn't make sense to me. Um, and so, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. I haven't smoked enough weed today. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> That's okay. You're more than welcome to light up on the show with us if you'd like to. So feel free. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm just uh, more about the religion aspect of it. Oh. Yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't necessarily tie to one type of religion or not. It's just more the more that you can prove that you're you're holding it for a spiritual purpose. So, um, first of all, joining a church, uh, any type of entheogenic church, and there are some out there that are you know kind of more Christian leaning, Catholic leaning, whatever, or more secular, or more um, more Native American based, or or uh, holistic healing personally, like, I don't know, Wicca earth, like, you know, holistic medicine, that's always more resonated with me. So it really doesn't tie down to one. It's just more the way that you articulate it. So you'd have to go in. It's not going to stop the cops from harassing you. If you're out there doing something, um, detrimental or something unethical like if you you took ate the mushrooms and drove your car and crashed it like you're pretty much screwed it doesn't matter if you're a member of a church or not um but if you it, you know if you were taking your sacrament to wherever you were going to be um doing it and you were being responsible about it and the cops just pulled you over and decided to fuck with you for no reason well, then you take it to court and you explain to them, no, this is what I was doing. This is why I was doing it. This is how I was being ethical. And this is the history behind it. And the more that you can articulate that, the better your case is. So it is going to also vary based off of county as well. Some counties are going to be different. Some states are going to be different. It's kind of weird, though. It seems like the more conservative states tend to have better religious protection laws. Uh, you know, just like Utah, we're super super conservative here but we have some of the strongest religion protect religious protection laws because of the lds church and they understand the need for that um so the more that you can educate yourself and arm yourself with knowledge to kind of advocate on your behalf the better um also a lot of it is verbiage too so the way that you talk about it um if i if i were to go into court and tell them just start spouting off like the the medicinal and and all of the the um, studies and 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 things like that. Then they're going to say, "Well, this sounds more like you're trying to self medicate, right? You're not using it for spiritual practice." But I don't. I it's it's to me this isn't a. It's like yes, it's a healing medicine, but it's my sacrament, and um, so really like words are powerful. Um, so. That's another thing that we're really big on is, you know, each one of these spore syringes, you'll see there's a membership to the church in each one. You don't have to come and join the church um, to, uh, you don't have to come and like put your information on our website or anything to join the church. But if you do, there's actually different training modules that talks about some of this. Uh, it's about an hour altogether. Uh, there's like an introductory one that's 15 minutes. It just kind of goes over the basics. Um, we have another one that's called our mushroom missionary training. Um, that kind of arms you a little bit more so that you can go out and kind of spread the word and help other people best protect themselves legally and also approach it ethically and, and um, get the best effect out of it as well. So, yeah, the biggest thing is just really watch how you talk about it. You're not, you know, it's not drugs. It's not recreational. It is spiritual. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to believe in God or, or Allah or whoever, you know, it's, it even can just be because I don't necessarily believe in any of that. I believe in something more that I, I feel like there is a higher power. I don't know what that is. That's why I do this. It helps me. It's, it's helping me find that you got to walk the path somehow. And, and that's a, a good guiding light. So sorry. I know I'm kind of long winded. You can tell me. To shut up. <laughs> no, oh, that's okay. no, it's, no, it's really no. Thank you so much. Very, very interesting. Um, Can I ask I'm, you, I'm sorry, uh, you might have said this earlier and I just didn't catch it, but you said join the church. Um, what church is it? Is it within Utah? Is it like LDS or? No. So we are secular, meaning that we do not identify with one specific type of religion. Um, we are non-denominational. So that is why our artwork does depict some of the different religions. Sorry, my cat okay. wants to but on the camera apparently <laughs> um so so yeah what more what we do is just educate people on how different religions 
could relate to their entheogenic journey and how they can integrate that into their own spiritual practices. So, um, you know, like I said, we do have the training on Sovereign Church. Um, it's it's sovereign.church is, is the website. Uh, we actually don't have a physical location yet. That's part of the reason why we're doing all this. We're trying to raise funds to start opening up sanctuaries across the U.S., places where people can come together, learn some of this stuff, and, and, and kind of learn about the different really we, we want to we don't want people warring and or fighting wars and killing each other over religion anymore because there's so much common ground to be found here um we want to bring people together and kind of like let's art let's let's argue without having to throw fists right like this is what you guys say this is what you guys say let's talk about it maybe you can change my mind maybe i can change yours maybe we can just walk away learning something new um so most of it's done online right now. We do a lot of like person to person meetups, stuff like this, where we kind of educate on a small level. Um, but we're really trying to empower other people to start their own churches and really like back, you know, in ancient, like I said, before Netflix, before all of that, when people just come home and kind of segregate themselves, uh, people like coffee houses, um, town squares and uh, church meetings and things like that. Like people would come together and they would, they would discuss things. They would, they talked about just like the meaning of life and, and all of this, that was how we educated each other. That was how we, so many people just want to be validated. They want to be told, yep, that's right. But like what happened to the culture of I want you to challenge my views. Maybe you can change my mind. Maybe you can educate me. Maybe we can figure something else out. And so we want to edu or we want to empower people to start their own churches so that you don't have to you don't have to worship somebody, right? You don't have to go sit in a pew on Sunday and give the big guy your money so that you can feel better about yourself. Like how about you sit down with your friends, smoke a bowl and like talk about big life shit, like you know, like one of my favorite questions to ask people is, uh, and, and you guys don't have to answer, but I like to think about this is, does your brain generate consciousness or does it receive it? Can you explain what that means? Yeah. yeah. Use it in a second. So, sorry, what were you saying? I said, I would have to answer that my brain receives it, that it's more a vessel for my consciousness. I, I would have to agree. So um, basically, yeah, your consciousness, right? What you're experiencing, what you as a person are experiencing, your everything, the, the moment that you're in right this minute, does your brain just generate that? Or are you receiving it? Is, is, are you more than just your physical body? Or, you know, uh, something that's interested me a lot recently is learning about near-death experiences a lot of people have near-death experiences where their consciousness will leave their body. And there's like proven cases where they will go visit family members and then they come back and they're like, can tell them exactly what happened. And there's like, there's another case where a guy was like floating above his bed watching him. And there was a fan up there and there was like a sticker on the top of the fan that he couldn't see. You couldn't see from the floor because it's on the top of it. And he, when he came back, he kept insisting there's a sticker up there and this is exactly what it looks like. And finally they went and got a ladder and looked and like, sure enough, it's there. So, you know, so, so that's the thing, like, yeah, just stuff like that. Like get your mind thinking. Cause who knows? I really like that. Um, that's an interesting way to, to look at it though. You know, like, are you more than just your body? That's very interesting. Cause like, I'm not going to lie. I struggle with my body. I'm in a lot of pain most times. Like I've got some medical issues and stuff. So a lot of times it's like, I can't stand my body. I don't necessarily want to be a part of this. You know, it doesn't work too well. And you're mm -hmm. more than your body though. That's, that's interesting. Like going to a place. Cause I know there are some people when you think about spiritually um, where they've been like say bedridden and stuff and they've been able to have full lifespans just meditating, you know, and, and that's really interesting to, think about applying. Absolutely. Meditation can definitely get you kind of on the same level as a hallucinogen or, or, you know, other psychoactive things, but man, you gotta be really dedicated and you gotta put in so much work. I mean, people spend decades doing it before they re reach any type of like 
ecstatic experience where like mushrooms you're pretty much gonna get it every time you know what i mean like yeah it may not always be a fun one or it might be like a weaker experience although i will say like some of the strongest trips i've ever had have been off of a single gram granted i'm a pretty small person but um you know you don't necessarily have to go big to to really have a pivotal breakthrough or whatever but yeah the the yeah. yeah the meditation and stuff just a lot of dedication work so a lot of people don't have the time or the drive to get to that point so earlier when when your cat walked through uh uh, Jay Patrick in chat was asking if it's, if it's a hairless cat. And I was yes. just wondering, if it, is it hairless or just a really close shaven? He's hairless. He's a naked kitty. I, I'm super allergic to cats, so I had to get a naked one. His name is Osiris. Say hello. His name is Osiris. We named him after the Egyptian god of the underworld, and he definitely knows that he's royalty. He acts like it for sure. You're here. Have you had him long? Does he He's have about, sweaters? Say that again. Does he have sweaters. Sweaters. Yes, we definitely we. There we go. <laughs> His little turtleneck. He's. A I fan. love it. Oh, he's fancy. He's got to dress up for our meeting. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Stylish. He's styling. <laughs> um. Was there any other questions that? Sorry, I haven't been watching the chat as close. I, I get talking and I, uh, my trouble. I I glanced over there. Go, go ahead, uh, Spartan. I was just saying. I saw a question. I don't know if it's a question. In chat, Blue Cast Garden says, "Ask Spartan Grown about the trip to Luzerne and tripping on penis envy." I don't know if she's referring to her, the mushrooms that she ate or the mushrooms that I was eating, but <laughs> she, she ate a lot more than I ate. A lot, a lot. You ain't more. quite a bit. And, and the well, penis just is no like, joke. Yeah, I was just much like you know a, a cap and a and a stem, you know, every hour or two. But Blue Kiss, on the other hand, was eating them like they're Tic Tacs or something, and she was becoming one with her tent and, and all kinds of fun stuff. So I think that's what she's <laughs> referring to. She went through metamorphosis that night, I believe. She. Said. That's what it was. She was a cocoon. Yeah, yeah. she was in a cocoon, <laughs> and she was. And she was coming out as a butterfly. I think that's what it was. That sounds like fun to me. I, <laughs> I see that in a cup is asked. And I actually did notice that yeah. earlier. Sorry, I forgot to, to respond. Um, I am not familiar. Uh, that is, is he local? Um, sorry, Matt from Matt's Off Road Recovery. Is he uh, based out of Utah? Um, if so, so, so with us being a church. We are a nonprofit. Uh, we actually do a lot of, oh, perfect. Yeah. Utah. That's yeah, where we're Utah. Um, so, so we do a lot with, uh, especially veterans. Veterans is kind of a, something that's close to my heart personally. Uh, not only that, but they tend to do like need these some of the most as well to fight the PTSD. And, um, they're the ones that really fought for the laws that we, operate under. So uh, we do a lot to help support our local veterans. Um, we do different types of, of, you know, fundraising stuff for them. Uh, the last time that we did a fundraising event, we were able to redo all of the signage for our local American Legion Club. Um, so we're definitely, we're always open to new good causes that align with um, what we're doing, especially, you know, any people any any groups that um can benefit from stuff like this um okay sorry i'm just reading the notes it I'm says not, he's in hurricane. In hurricane yeah i'll have to check it out so so mormon royalty we got a lot of that here though it seems <laughs> like everybody is. Is that he's not the guy that was doing the dragging the kids out in the desert, was he? That was like abusing all those children and some kids died. It was like a boot camp type deal. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, 
Because there's some weird oh, shit that's going on here, too. Wasn't that kid nature or something like that? Uh, I thought that, that was, like, know. almost a reality oh. show that they okay. had. Yeah. Okay, I just, I wasn't quite sure. I wanted to make sure that that's not who you're talking about. Yeah, we're we're always open to partnering with, with um, people. So if that's somebody that you think we should reach out to, I'd be happy to. See, there's something about the, uh, thank you. There's something about the community, just like, you know, meeting people up. So hopefully that's a really cool connection for you guys. Yeah, and that's the other thing too is I'm you know a lot of the the people responding here seem to be really knowledgeable or have their own um, their own experience here. Uh, like I said, we're really big on education. We're trying to build a mushroom army uh, a, a, or an army of mushroom missionaries that uh, are are really just willing to help spread the word and and you know. Earlier on, I talked about the importance of like being ethical and responsible and safety and all that. Uh, people to help us kind of push that and, and make sure that the culture stays safe rather than people just out there doing some crazy stuff. And so, you know, anybody that wants to get involved, we we really are um, trying to help build the community. And so we have members all across the U.S., uh, we're the first people to get spores in stores nationwide. We're sold in smoke shops all around the U.S. Um, so we do have members nationwide. And really, like I said, we're just trying to open up sanctuaries all over where what people can come. What a fun tagline that you get. The first spores in stores. That's so yeah, cool. first spores in stores. And, you know, and it's been a wild ride, man. I quit my, I quit a good paying job to become a mushroom priestess and everybody in my family, I, I can only imagine, they probably think I'm a psycho, uh, but it's been so rewarding. I've mm -hmm. met, I mean, obviously people like you guys, this has been awesome. Um, but I, oh, I'm thankful for it. Absolutely. Shout out uh, Ty real quick for this connection, man, because yeah, um, thank you so much. Yeah. I really I appreciate it. This was going to be good from the time. Like as soon as I'd started talking to him, I'm like, yeah, good vibes. <laughs> right on. Trying to get this joint packed. Sorry, guys. There was a mission I'm question. Because I am going to reach out to them. Um, <clears throat> another thing, you know, addiction is another really big thing that we try to. Um, that was one of my biggest reasons for getting into this. I have a family full of pro of addicts. I've seen it just tear literally my whole family between alcoholism and drug addiction, and. Um, we're trying to fix that, man. The the opioid epidemic and then uh, COVID and all the shutdowns and like the. Okay. Do you want to talk about that helping out with people with addiction? Because I've heard um, that typically when you are doing a regimen, um, you're going to want to go like a day on, two days off so, sort of a deal. Um, I heard that when it comes to fighting addiction or like the really deep, dark depression where you just cannot get out of it, it's been so treatment resistant, you would want to do a daily microdose, um, do like seven days on, take a break for a few days and then do seven days again um, to really kind of kickstart and, and push that addiction over. Is that like, what's your experience when it comes to that? So it's going to vary for everybody, really. Um, in my opinion, the I I recommend starting with a full dose, um, the to kind of kick that off. Uh, basically, so I don't. Sorry, I don't want to over inundate you guys with too much information, but I can talk about the kind of the the actual clinical side of it. Lay it on us. Okay. So the way the reason why it's so. Um, so effective at treating addiction is because it shuts down your amygdala, which is basically the part of your brain that's responsible for fight or flight. Um, but it's also where your ego sits. And basically, like everybody knows the term ego death, but um, really what your ego is made up of is is like literally any negative thing that's ever happened to you. Anytime somebody called you fat or ugly or you called yourself fat or ugly, all of the mistakes you made. And especially with drug addiction, like most people that are in drug, like that are, that are addicted to drugs or alcohol, it's, they're trying to fill a hole, right. Or they're trying to cover up. And then you, you know, you tend to do things that you're not necessarily proud of, or you hurt people. And then once you're sober, you don't want to fill those feelings and you'd rather just bury it some more. And so what it does is it actually shuts down that part of your brain and resets it. 
so that you're not in that constant loop of fight or flight, right? Um, and then also the self-loathing as well. Um, but it also, once it's shut down, it allows your uh, your consciousness to step away and look at it from a third person. So like I can sit here and say, I'm ugly, I'm fat, I've got big ears, whatever, and all day long. And it doesn't matter what anybody tells me. It's not going to be the same to you, right? You can look at me and say, you look just fine, but it doesn't like, it doesn't resonate. But now I can step out of my body and look at it from your perspective. And I'm like, oh shit, maybe I'm not that, you know what I mean? And so it really, it's kind of a twofold thing. So with the microdose, you're able to work on that, but you're not going to get the the same a full dose, you're looking like 10 years of therapy in one session kind of deal, right? You're just cramming it in there. With a microdose, it's it's more of kind of a day-to-day -day thing um, because it's not the same level of neuroplasticity. And it's also not going to shut your amygdala down and reset it the same way that a full dose will. Um, so the well, microdose... Do you recommend going on one of those large doses? Like if I feel like I've taken one and I got something solved and I feel pretty positive overall from it, you know, regardless of it being a good or bad trip, you know, like kind of how we talked earlier, I would, I would say like, how long until I have to wait to try it again to attack more, you know, cause I know there's a lot in me that I'm not going to be able to tackle in one sitting. I, I think that the best way is to trust your gut and, um, know, like really be honest with yourself and like, am I prepared to do this? Um, it is going to vary for everybody. Although I will say it was Terrence McKenna that, um, that, that said, once you get the message, stop picking up the phone. So, you know, if you feel like you fixed the, whatever you were trying to work on, right? Like if you're doing it for depression and you take it and you're like, sweet, I'm not depressed anymore. Okay. Well, you probably don't need to do it again until you see those effects coming back in. So, with the so usually when if you take a full mushroom trip you'll have obviously you have like the trip is six hours right um after that six hours you come down but people still have they call it like a sparkle period or um something along those lines where you, for sometimes it's a week sometimes it's a month sometimes it's multiple months but you like everything is just a little bit happier you have that mood increase things are what if you don't have that does that mean that it wasn't a good trip that doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't a good trip it just means that maybe it's more subtler or um sometimes you a lot of people will have different tolerances to it especially if you have, if you're on meds or if you take them in addition with other stuff. And then also sometimes I just can't explain it really. Like there was a time that, um, I had some golden teachers. We, you know, we went and did a ceremony, everybody partook and none of us felt anything. And I'm like, I know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like, I know I did a, I grew these myself. I know that they're legit and I couldn't figure it out. Well then I, I literally, one guy was eating them by the handful. So definitely should have been good. Mm -hmm. Took them home. I had about a little over, it was like 1.3 grams left. And I couldn't bring myself to throw them away. And so I figured, oh, it'll just be like a microdose. Maybe I'll feel something. Literally the strongest trip I've ever had. Oh, geez. And I like, I felt my entire body, like I laid in bed and watched my body decay and turn into earth and like become a mushroom and then reassemble itself. You know what I mean? Like off of one gram. And I've taken upwards of five grams. You know, I usually don't because it really is hard on my stomach. But sometimes it, they just affect people differently. And there's a lot of different factors. But sometimes the mushrooms just don't. They're like, nope, you're not ready for this. So, and I've had that happen also with other people. The same thing. I took it, nothing. I gave it to my friend. Like, literally the same batch, same flush, same hole, like everything. Same strain. They did nothing to me. My friend, it like totally blew their their socks off you know and so there's i don't know I, the mushrooms have a mind of their own they really do mm -hmm. um and then you but you've got it. <laughs> a lot of people a lot of people um 
everybody is going to microdose a little bit differently. Uh, I usually don't recommend taking a dose daily because you part of the reason why mushrooms are not normally abused is because you get such a your tolerance um, increases so much. Like it's not like cannabis where you can smoke it daily and then you know, yeah, you have to smoke more, but like you have to really take a lot of mushrooms to do that. Um, usually I recommend like every two to three days taking a microdose. Um, that helps keep your, uh, your tolerance low, but, um, really it's going to vary. It's, I think everybody just has to really kind of find what feels right for them. Um, and then in terms of like strains, they're called strains for mushrooms too, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, people call them different stuff, but yeah, strains is a, a good descriptor. With the different strains, like obviously, like you said earlier with penis envy, it's a pretty strong, significant. Um, I know you've talked about B positives, I think, or golden teachers before. They say um, B plus, I like to call them B positives. Oh, B plus, okay. B plus is the real Yeah. Thing. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Is there both. anything that you can share in terms in terms of what you're going to be using a specific strain to tackle or approach? You know, is there is there really a difference in that? So really, the biggest thing is going to be the back to the SSRI thing, right? The the really the the main factor in the type of experience you're going to have is going to be your set and setting. Um, because again, like taking them and going to the, you could take the same type of mushroom and go to like have a different experience every time, depending on how you prepare for it. Um, okay. So I then if, I, really if, I'm, if I were to say like, if I were to have one of the, what they call like, you know, the easier trips or the, the softer trips, like a golden teacher, then is it just about me like wanting to go and approach it and say, Hey, I'm ready to open up. I'm ready to experience whatever is inside of me. I'm okay with it getting dark if it needs to, and then still taking that regular amount or would I need to amplify and take more because I know it's a weaker dosage. I don't so, know if that's the right term, weaker psilocybin content. Oh, no, you're, you're, yeah, that's, that's good. So yeah, like penis MV6 is going to be one of our more, more potent strains. Um, we do have some that are not going to be nearly as potent. Um, most of these are, are they're, I mean, they're pretty consistent though. Unfortunately, you can't really guarantee genetics with, with the seeds, right? With the spores. Um, you can, if you clone them and things like that, and then that's kind of where you get into the really potent strains, but in general, some of them are going to be more potent than others. Um, and they will have subtle differences. So like, it, a lot it's it, it's really similar to cannabis right like you can smoke cannabis and it's all going to get you high but like sometimes like some are going to be more heady some are going to be more body high some are going to be like more mungy but some people are going to be more easy be able to distinguish the difference more easily than others um and so there are going to be some subtle differences so like penis mv6 uh it is going to be really really strong. Most people tend to have a really heavy body high. Um, the end, like depending on how, or how much of a, um, a dose they take, they'll have some really strong visuals too, but it, it tends to be more of a body load. Um, where like the Z strain is going to be like a kind of a good mix. It's also super potent. Um, and then that's going to be kind of a good mix of like a, a body and more mental. Um, the lizard King, so I haven't necessarily consumed every single one of these different strains. We have 21 different varieties. Um, the Lizard King tends to have some really strong visuals. They're not quite as potent as the um, as the Penis MV6, but they can still be really potent and they tend to be uh, pretty visual. Um, and then on top of that, the, the some of the other differences in strains are going to be like, some are going to be more contamination resistant than others. Some are going to be a little bit more temperamental to like humidity and, and, and stuff like that. Um, and then also some will grow a little bit faster than others. So like uh, the, uh, um, the Koi Samoy uh, is actually, it's a, it's the super strain. And the reason why it's a super strain is because it's one of our fastest cultivators. Um, so I guess that's a little bit of a rundown on all four of the strains that are included in the giveaway. Um, 
And, but yeah, they, they all do have a little bit different of a personality, but they're all going to give you the same general effect. Um, so really the biggest thing is how you approach them. Nice. Okay. Well, I, are you I love that though, how you approach it. Um, and I know you guys were talking like set and setting with that. Um, I think that it's so cool. The first time that I went into mushrooms, I didn't know anything about, you know, I knew I understood set and setting for the most part. I didn't really understand set, but I definitely understood setting. I wanted to be somewhere safe and, you know, somewhere I was comfortable. I knew my way around sort of a deal. Um, mm -hmm. Where was I just going with that? You thought it was cool. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was cool, apparently. <laughs> hmm. Are you familiar yeah. with the, uh, the uh, what is it, Enigma strain? Uh, we had Hillbilly Herb on uh, a while back. I see him in chat. Uh, shout out to Hillbilly. Uh, and, and it grow. It looks like a brain. So the name Enigma is very suitable. <laughs> I yeah. I personally haven't uh, tried them myself, but I, from what I understand, they are super super potent and they're very uh, very mental. So um, another one of our really mo our most popular strains is like Jedi Mindfuck. Um, I will say that a lot of the people that name their their uh, strains are pretty good about giving them good ones. So, like, the Jedi Mindfuck, it's funny because a lot of the therapists don't want to use it. Ooh, Greg, congratulations. Congrats, Greg. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of therapists don't want to use the Jedi Mindfuck, probably because they don't want their people to think that they're getting mindfucked. Um, mm. But it actually, like, it, that one's really good for kind of a trauma um, because it, it kind of, uh, breaks your mind right open and lets you crawl around in there. Um, so, you know, a, a lot of them, the names kind of will give you a little bit of a hint about it, but really it's, it's hard to say because you, unfortunately we can't guarantee genetics with spores. So it's, it, it some of it's going to depend on like the cultivation method and, and, and then of course the consumption the the actual ceremony that you do now okay i remembered where i was going with that um the set and and setting for it like if you're going into mushrooms um you might not necessarily know what you're going into to ask for help with and that was that was my case you know i knew the setting i wanted but mm -hmm. that mind that place i just knew i was like all right i'm gonna go into this open i don't know what's gonna happen but i'm open to it you know i didn't want to I wasn't in my head telling myself, I want to stop if it gets bad. I, I hope I only have happy thoughts. You know, it was just, I will take what comes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think earlier you had said, um, you know, when you go to take a trip, have a full dose as your first one instead of microdosing. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what I did with mine. Um, whereas like if I would have microdosed and I had panic or paranoia, I wouldn't have continued having mm -hmm. that full step into it where I couldn't stop it. You know, if I wanted to, even though I had a fantastic time overall with it, um, it kind of opened up doors that I wasn't sure I was struggling with that I didn't realize different topics. Um, and the, you know, I don't think you should be worried about if, if like somebody in chat say, cause I was worried about going into it and not knowing what I was trying to approach. Um, but I think that you don't necessarily, like if you are trying it out, if you are trying to just open yourself up to it, you can just go into it with that set as well, that mindset for it. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't have to have a destination in mind. Right. But the biggest thing is really is going into it with an open mind. And, and um, most of the time people tend to struggle or they have a bad, they call it a bad trip. Um, it, it, it's more, I don't like to ever say, I don't think any trip is bad. I think they're more, some are more difficult than others. Some are less fruitful than others. Um, but I think if you want to have a good experience, then every time like 100% it's going to be like a blast a carnival a fun time whatever like maybe mushrooms aren't the the way to go because you have to you have to understand that sometimes you're like it's it's going to kick your ass because it's it's like therapy it, you sometimes you got to talk about the hard shit and you don't necessarily want to talk about it but you got to talk about it and the mushrooms cycle through too though just because you're having a bad moment in the trip doesn't mean it will stay a bad trip or a negative experience exactly. through it exactly and a lot of people they do it's usually 
if they do get stuck in that, it's because they psyched themselves out. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's bad. It's going bad. And it's like, no, no, no. A lot of the time, if you just breathe through it, breathing exercises help a lot to calm it down. And it also helps with the nausea as well. Um, and it, it's just like a physio physiological response. If you do the breathing exercises, it automatically calms you down. Um, so that helps a lot. And then um, just like even just telling yourself, I did this to myself. I know that it's going to end. This isn't going to happen. Because sometimes like a lot of people tend to have um, like time loses meaning, right? It's no longer linear. It's suddenly like everywhere and nowhere. And it's like a, 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 an eternity is also like a second. And so that can be really disorienting for people. And that's when they usually start to panic is if they can't understand like, no, it's it, you just got to write it out. You try to fight it and it, it it's going to drag you kicking and screaming sometimes. And so the best thing to do is just hold on. And that's where, you know, with a full dose, a lot of the time or like a heroic dose, you don't really have the option to push back or to like, you're just, it, it's just taking you, bam, you're going and, and you're too out of it to really even stop the train. Mm -hmm. uh, Do it. Damn it. Yeah, IV volume. Yeah, so there are different things that you can take that'll bring down a trip if you're really if you're really struggling. But honestly, my biggest thing, like, I don't even take Tylenol unless I have to because I'm, you know, I'm that weird hippie girl, whatever. But um, the biggest thing is having like, I really like to have some type of a support system no matter what, just because at the very least it's a tether, right? It, it's something that can reground you. And like, if you start waking out, you know that they're there no matter what. And that's like that little safety, that little safety switch in the back of your head. It really is comforting and um, it can go a long way for making sure that people aren't like to, to stop you from going down that spiral. <laughs> it's like, like you laughed about me hugging the toilet. I lit like, I feel bad for Brock because that must've been so annoying for him. But um, but it, I, I, would, I don't know how long I would have sat there if he hadn't came in and snapped me out of it. <laughs> so that's where I feel like right. it's really nice to have somebody that you can, you can do some weird shit and they're not going to like, you know, that they're not going to hate you tomorrow. It's because anybody that's done mushrooms knows it can definitely get weird sometimes. And so that's, you know, having that little bit of safety or that, that little bit of support there really helps. Here, here. Right on. Yeah. How are we doing, well, Dave? How are we doing? I've got a little bit of business to take care of. Um, Taking care of business. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give <laughs> a shout out. Our spotlight sponsor of the week, Star Shine. Yep, yep. Every um, every week. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you just fine. Bro. Every every week, uh, we'd like to recognize uh, somebody who uh, was a sponsor from the uh, Chatathon from last year, and and this uh, this week we're recognizing Ganja Ghost, who uh, who has uh, Starshine Cannabis. Yeah, let's, uh, let's give him a shot. Uh -huh. Very Thank funny. You. Very yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't me. That was on their Instagram <laughs> page, buddy. So it's all them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let me take care of a little bit of business here. I, uh, well, I, I'll say it again. Uh, thank you so much, Chelsea, uh, for your uh, for joining us tonight and and your generosity with the giveaway. Um, I just want to say, um, uh, coming up, uh, we've got. Uh, where are we in the? Uh, oh, next week already is Todd McCormick. Uh, yes, what? Todd comes back. Yeah. For the final. Well, I don't want to say that it's the final giveaway, but for the last. He's been our yeah. sponsor for six weeks in a row, and we've been so grateful to him. And yeah, he's yeah, coming back exciting. next week, and that's exciting. That's cool. And uh, April the tenth, we've got uh, Nick Bull from No Bull Glassworks, and uh, 
And Emily, you you brought him to the show. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your friend Nick? Yeah, absolutely. He's a really cool guy, and it's going to be a great conversation. He blows glass, and it's beautiful work. Right, right on, on, right on. And April, oh, and uh, thanks, a big shout out again to Ty, uh, who's uh, on in a, uh, in a number of other uh, positions, our web designer, and uh, doing a fantastic job over there. And all of the information that I'm giving you here is on the website as well. Uh, April the 17th, uh, Breeder Steve will be joining us. So uh, that's what's happening. Yeah. And um, as always, I, uh, we want to give a shout out to our promotion we're doing right now. I'm going to do it. Five bucks for a duck. Oh my God, you made her run away. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You want to bring her up? <laughs> yeah. Five yeah. bucks for a duck. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, now we're uh, doing- why aren't we doing a dab? It's about time, isn't it? I'll do that. Thank um, you very much. I will. What, else, what other business do I have? Do I have any more business? Is that it? That's it. Well, just no, no. You, I mean, you still have a race to uh, pull off tonight. Oh, but, yeah. uh, but in addition oh. to uh, just a little bit more on five bucks a duck, yeah. So uh, just go to our website and uh, and then um, click on uh, donate and. Um, yeah, uh, or, or, I'm sorry. Yeah, donate, and that'll uh, that'll uh, hook you into uh, link you into uh, GoFundMe. GoFundMe. Yep. This is my third joint, uh, by the way. It'll link you to the GoFundMe page, and then you can buy a duck. You can do it anonymous if you want. Um, that gets you an entry. We do it every third Wednesday, and right. then. A bottle of uh, Lost Coast Plant Therapy, thirty-two ounces. Right on. Two ounces. Right on. So, what do you say? You want to do? You want to have some fun? Absolutely. Hey, I got to tell you, the uh, the race that you had with the uh, the, the planes. Yeah. Uh, so normally, here's what I find is that with the the, the typical race. Uh, if you haven't seen one, Chelsea, you're in for a treat. Uh, typical race is, uh, is everybody's uh, kind of neck and neck and back and forth. But with the plane, of course, it takes that other dimension. It goes up and down. Well, and I swear, this is, uh, well, this is really going to blow your mind then. Oh, God. Oh, no. Uh oh. Here's trouble. <laughs> All right, Whoa. I like this. We went with the spaceships. Thank you, sir. No. Like but you know what I noticed? That's- you know what I noticed is that with the uh, with the planes, Correct. normally somebody is cheering for one of the uh, one of the competitors. Uh, with the planes, nobody said nothing. Well, me anyway. I was so mesmerized by these fucking planes going up and down and back and forth. <laughs> Well, let's anyway, see what this I, one is. I digress. I can't wait. Oh, my God. Well, here you are. Up. Love it. Where's the smart money? Uh, I don't know. Well, that's not fair. I know Chris Kraft. Cannabis 420 needs a little bit longer name. A little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over how there's three of them with three engines, but the keeper of the strange has only got one engine. Look at yeah, him what's up with that? He's got the lead right now, too. Yeah, obviously. obviously. I'm, I'm Come on. Number two. <laughs> oh, this is some weird music. Oh, I got it it is a strange it. music, ain't it? Very weird. If you're on mushrooms, <laughs> it might be all right. <laughs> is you there ever a drop? Nine seconds. Eight seconds. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here comes Jay. Whoa, oh, Jay. 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 Oh, behind. Oh, that was three, right? Four. Well done, buddy. Good. 
Oh, he's got one of those. Uh, oh, he even landed. Look at that. Nice land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way to go, dude. Congratulations, dude. Well done, buddy. Congrats. <laughs> Well, that's quite the, pr- uh, the yeah. space race. Usually it's a duck race and they're, they're swimming ducks, but they like that's us to mix it up a little bit. Exactly. I like it. Yeah, you got the, the spaceship so we can blast off, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> now, you said there are other um, stories that you're wanting to get into, other artwork that you're wanting to get into with the sets that you're doing. Can you share kind of some of them? Is that... Or is that just, you know, you don't want to let the goods spill? Oh, the problem is I have so many ideas. It's a question of where we're going to start. Um, I would like to make one about uh, the Mormon church oh. just because it's local and I like to piss people off. Um, and well, not only that, but there's a lot of history there too. But uh, also, um, I don't think you were here earlier when I brought up the, like the witch trials. I think that that mm-hmm. is something that we would like to to do too at some point um really though the the list just goes on and on because there's really so it's not just mushrooms right there's a lot of different entheogens or things that fall in that category cannabis is actually considered an entheogen as well um not only because it's used in religious practice but if you take high enough amounts of it it can be psychoactive um i was wondering if that was counting towards the religious um quantifying like if that counted if cannabis counted for that yeah so yeah so there's definitely a lot of um background there as well right on on the use of cannabis and religion and um not just the rastafarians but also um i believe the the like different um ayurvedic medicines they actually use like cannabis seeds and they grind them up in addition to like different um different remedies and things like that and they just it's been used in cultures forever you know there's i think the biggest thing is educating yourself and the more that you can go in there and i don't know I, some people call it baffle them with bullshit what but it's not really bullshit like you have the more knowledgeable you are and the more you can argue your case the better your protection is basically um and so right. really it's you know I, I mentioned the sovereign church website um it's it looks horrible so i i'm no web designer i put it together um so excuse that if you guys do check it out but um i'm i'm slowly starting to put more and more kind of educational material if you guys are interested in the different you know religious connections throughout different types of religions um so i'll be adding more and more to that um but uh also you know we have like our instagram page we try to put out different content that that talks about some of the connections there too um but yeah we're open to to suggestions there's just there's so many different options right like panspermia i'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the panspermia theory that um mushroom they have actually found fungus in space um and uh so there's you know, there's a theory that mushrooms actually came to us on a, um, like an asteroid from another planetary system. And, and, um, you know, it could be like maybe another life form. I don't know. There's a lot of different. See, I want to go, I want to go read all of these stories right now. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) there's, um, I mentioned earlier, uh, oh, it's right here. So um, if you guys are interested in some of the religious roots, I highly recommend this book. It's called The Immortality Key. Uh, the guy's name is Brian Marescu. Um, he actually, he's been on like Joe Rogan and, and a lot of other podcasts and and kind of given a, a like a brief rundown of this. But so he's a lawyer actually, but he grew up in a Catholic school um, and is like educated on ancient Greek and Latin and and whatnot. And during COVID, he decided to kind of, he came across an article talking about like the religious connection between uh, hallucinogens and and um, just history. And, and he, it struck a nerve with him and he just, he literally like during COVID just dove right in and he was like going to the Vatican, going down into their catacombs, like traveling all over the world, talking to different people. And he was, you know, he, he was able to gather archeological evidence, proving the use of LSA, 
um, and and really kind of just getting. He's not the only one that's been doing this. There's, you know, there's a, another author. His name's, uh, he's a doctor, uh, Carl Ruck, um, who he's a professor um, for Brown University, I think. But he's a classicist. And he made the case back four years ago. And it literally got him, like, banned from everything. They just shunned him. And because, you know, he didn't question Western religion then. And so they literally shut him, like shut all the doors to him. But he realized like I'm onto something and he just kept turning out information. And like he, he literally gathered so much of the evidence and, and he's just like published book after book. And it's pretty dense reading, especially if you're not really familiar with different religions. Like I've always kind of been interested in this and I still feel like I'm drowning in it sometimes. I still feel like I'm a novice. And then I talk to other people. I'm like, okay, I'm not like, I'm not happy, you know, but this, so, so long story short, this book goes from a, pretty much a lot of the stuff that we've talked about and it ties it all back and it makes a really good case for it. So um, I highly recommend that book, uh, the immortality key. If you guys are, you know, readers and want to learn more, um, or you can always hit me up on Instagram. Like I said, we it's we shared. We're trying to get more and more content out there. Um, I love to answer questions. I love to talk. Obviously, I'm, I'm really good. Oh at my that. gosh, I just I have so many more questions that I want to talk with you about. So definitely, definitely, definitely looking forward to more conversations. Chelsea, yeah, this has been a <laughs> this has been a fascinating conversation. Thank you. I I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's been fun. Yeah, thank uh, you for the invite. I didn't mean to hijack the whole thing. Oh, no, you 100%. did great. This was awesome. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Chelsea's uh, contact information, uh, 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 Instagram is in the show description. Uh, and forgive me, forgive my highness, wink, wink. But uh, did we talk about the uh, – I, I know I thought about the uh, – affiliate program no we did talk about it didn't we we did talk about it i can't remember, I I can't remember either. i think we talked about it before the show i don't think we talked yeah. about it during the show well okay well i'm just trying to nutshell okay well that might have been it uh, i'm just I, i'll try to nutshell it. i'm looking at the clock there and i don't i i mean it, uh, um, the conversation has been fantastic but in a nutshell yeah uh, you inspired us to look into um uh, a an affiliate program uh up until now i'd never i didn't know how it logistically it worked but what we can do is set up a program and uh, and then any funds can be funneled directly to the Last Prisoner Project. Uh, it's a no-brainer. And so we're uh, – thank you for the inspiration to do that. And uh, so that's where we're going to aggressively pursue is a uh, affiliate program. So anyway, yeah, it's the clock in the wall. Yeah. Thank and, you. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much. Uh, and uh, uh, little Eva usually has an outro for us, but if you could please hang around and then we'll, we'll say good night together. Well, but uh, um, does AG Seed Co ship to Australia? I think he does, doesn't he, Todd McCormick? Uh, he uh, yes, oh, yeah, he yeah. does. He just can't get. It's like a three week process or something. Yeah, so he you. does though. Chat. I yeah. I bet you it'll get there faster than it got to Rick though. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he right, is. A, love, it, 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 yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. On that note, uh, chat. We love you. Thanks so much for hanging. And um, and uh, until next week, uh, Spartan. Uh, as usual, final words, sir. Much love and keep growing, everybody. Right on. <laughs>